Hey guys, my name is Courtney Hope. I play Jesse Faden. I am here to answer questions for the Control community. Hello everyone, I'm Sean Dury and I play Dylan Faden in Control. And I wanna wish Control a very happy third anniversary and answer some questions from the Control community. I cannot believe it has been three years and I am excited. I'm excited to see what the questions are. So let's get this party started. Hello, so my question is, what did a typical day working on Control look like, whether in office or working from home? I'd have some breakfast and head right over to Remedy Studios. And in the morning, we would go over whatever we were gonna do that day. And it might be a photo shoot, a motion capture session, a facial capture session, or a voiceover. So whatever it was we were gonna do that day, we'd go over in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we'd actually film whatever it is we were planning on doing. We shot a lot of the beginning half of the game and then we shot the rest of it. And then we actually went back and reshot many pieces from the beginning of the game because we had found out more about Jesse and um, all the other characters and how it all kind of blended together. And then during the pandemic, I shot a lot of it in my closet actually with my dog laying underneath the blankets, breathing loudly. <laughs> my question would be for Sean Dury. Sean, Dylan Faden is probably one of the most enigmatic and mysterious characters in the game, but I'm very curious to know where you draw all your inspiration from to play this character. Thanks for answering my question. One of the earliest things that was brought up uh, when we were talking about the character Dylan and how we were going to portray him in Control was uh, Anthony Hopkins' character in Silence of the Lambs. Uh, you know, Dylan was stuck in a prison cell. Anthony Hopkins' character was stuck in a prison cell, dealing with a lot of uh, similarities there and just the staging. And then also the unsettling nature of the character. Uh, Dylan's a little bit off when we meet him. And uh, then we find out a little more why he's the way he is. So I would say on surface, Silence of the Lambs. Um, and then for internally for myself, I based it on some characters in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, the way that all of the people in the asylum would interact with each other. I kind of drew some inspiration from uh, a few different productions of that that I've been associated with or have watched. Courtney, my question for you is, where do you think the other doors in Ocean View Motel open up to? And Sean, my question for you is, if Dylan ever gets a chance to wake up, how do you think his relationship with Jesse will be? Where do the other doors in the Ocean View room or motel open up? You know, other dimensions, other points in time, other realities. I think that is one of the beautiful things about it is there are so many possibilities and it really allows your imagination to run wild and free and frantic and fun. When Dylan wakes up, what will his relationship with Jesse be? Well, that's kind of like the $10 million question, isn't it? So my lips are sealed. Hello, my question for Sean and Courtney is the relationship between Jesse and Dylan. How do you guys and how did you guys maybe talk about um, both before and after the Bureau? What do you view their relationship as and what do you find interesting about their relationship? They have a really strong bond, uh, and then uh, we get to see how strong that bond is and how it gets tested. Uh, as far as Courtney and Sean, we're good friends, and we've known each other for a few years, so she's not actually my sister, though, guys. I'm sorry to break it to you. It's been a bit interesting, because Dylan has been uh, infiltrated in a lot of ways by the hiss. And so the question becomes, is Dylan really still in there? Is he not? Has he forever changed? Will he f come back at some point in time? Um, but I feel like underneath all of it, Jesse still absolutely loves Dylan. And it, it, she's, you know, fought for him her whole life. He's her only family. Um, he's her closest family and she feels responsible and very protective over him. So. You know, I would love to think that Dylan hopefully still loves Jesse somewhere in there underneath all of the his madness. My question's for Sean. Um, Dylan's a really human character despite all the inhuman things he goes through. And I find him very relatable. I think you brought a lot of humanity to him. And so I'm just curious, what are some things that you think 
really drive who Dylan is, the things that he struggles with and emotions he has to grapple with both before and after the hiss get to him. In control, uh, the hiss kind of drives who Dylan is and Dylan's want to have some sense of control over his life uh, is kind of what drives him. Hi, this is a question for Jesse or Courtney. Uh, did you get to model all of the outfits in studio or in real life? And uh, which, which outfit is your favorite? I love this question. I loved the outfits of Jesse Faden. I did get to try a few of them on um, as far as the main street clothes go of Jesse, you know, with the blue jacket and the, the shirt with the, the red. I definitely have a few favorites. My number one favorite is the one, I don't know the name of it, but it looks like it's like a chest plate. It's like a gray and black with like red on the sides and it just looks like some superhero, badass, like warrior, um, almost like a Black Widow-esque thing going on. And I love that outfit. I also love the other black one where it looks like I've got these like drapes coming down. And um, both of them are just a little bit more edgy. And I like to think that, you know, Jessie's got a lot of strength in a lot of ways within her. And I just love, they look a little more like battle ready. Hey, this question is for Courtney and Sean. If you two could have started any other game together, outside of control, what would it have been? Thank you for the question, handsome devil. I seriously would love to work with him on any game possible. Um, you know, and anything, I, I would like to work with him, you know, where we can really interact a lot. I feel like, you know, in this with control, right, he's, you know, um, infiltrated by the hiss, so I can't really have many conversations with him. And even, you know, in, in uh, Quantum Break, it was, you know, bits and, and pieces. So I would, I would love to have a game where I can really have um, a lot uh, more interaction with, with Sean. But honestly, any game, I'm down. I love being a part of the Control franchise and I love working with Courtney too. So uh, I hope three more games in a movie. <laughs> if you could have one more special power, not already in the game, um, what would it be and why? Thank you. Probably shape-shifting. I think it would be interesting in some of the fights to be able to shape-shift into some of the enemies and, and to be able to use them, mobilize them to, to work against each other and be able to go, okay, I can now shape-shift into the hiss. Let's embody it and see what that really is because then the more she knows her enemy, the stronger she can become and the better she can be at fighting them. That's just something I've thought a lot about. Greetings. I am not a fan. I am a light tower generator. But there is a fan present. My question is, what paranormal activity have you encountered or are inclined to believe is actually real? Thank you. Goodbye. I lived in a haunted apartment once, and this is true. Every so often, uh, in the morning, we'd come out and in the kitchen, all of the drawers and cabinets would be open and none of the roommates did it. Or we might come back from a night out and all the cabinets and drawers would be open. One time, a poster threw itself off the wall. It was a weird, weird place. I only lived there for about a year, but it was definitely haunted. I... This is a good one for me. I believe in all of the above when it comes to paranormal activities. Yeah, I mean, I, I very much so was drawn to this game the second I found out about all the psychic abilities and, you know, Jesse's interaction with Polaris. I feel like that was absolutely something that um, really, really, truly drew me to this game. Um, of course, you both previously worked on Quantum Break. Were there any lessons or advice that you brought over to the new project? Honestly, the, the best things I learned on Quantum Break that could apply to Control were all technical aspects. Uh, how to behave on mocap stages, knowing how to T-pose, if you know what a T-pose is. How to use the facial capture, which is a very, very specific camera and takes a very specific style of acting to use. Uh, so I would say the biggest things I learned on Quantum Break that I brought to control were technical issues and, and technical acting aspects. Being able to walk as certain characters and getting your idling 
motion, your idling pose, stuff like that. Um, I, I really knew nothing about, so that, that was a lot of fun. Facial capture, you know, um, being able to emote, show tears without tears dropping, you know, because that pixelates your face and, and it makes it more difficult for them. Um, voiceover, I'd done voiceover before, but I definitely learned, you know, a, a lot about my own personal range and my, my own capacity which I feel like in general really strengthened me from quantum break to control, being able to, you know, gain a confidence in a realm that I'd never worked in before. It was something that I'd never done. I never expected or, or really even thought about being in games. And now it's like, I just, I want to be in them all the time. Ah, uh -huh, it's good to hear from you, director. Uh, sorry, Jesse. Hey, out of all your new colleagues, who has been the most enjoyable to work with? This question may get Jesse in trouble because I am going to name someone and it might hurt some feelings. I believe Jesse's favorite colleague is Emily Pope. She is a confidant, she is an equal. Um, she's been extremely helpful, but then there's also Ati. And Ati is a visionary. He um, is so much help to Jesse. Um, I don't know if I would say Polaris is a colleague, but I'm gonna go with Emily Pope. I really love Jesse and Emily's dynamic. I love their interactions, their conversations. I just think Emily is so funny. I think she's got a really great balance. She brings um, a little bit of levity to, to Jesse in some of the heavier moments. And yeah, that was a really good question. And um, hopefully nobody else in the oldest house gets mad. But if they do, I will blame you. I'd like to know how do you think Control would be like if Jesse was the one in prison and Dylan had to save her? I think it would be a lot more violent. I feel like Dylan uh, is a bit more of a powder keg than Jesse is. And uh, w you might have seen a bit more ultra violence out of Dylan. Also, uh, I would have loved to see Jesse's, Jesse's character uh, be bald. I think that would have been awesome. I think the fans want to see that too. And uh, also Dylan would have had a lot more hair as well. You know, one of the things that we really looked at was empathy, you know, making sure that Jesse really had empathy, you know, even for the objects of power, inanimate objects, these, these, these ways of being, it was something that was extremely important. And I would love to be able to see Sean be able to embody those as well and, and see what he did with those moments. Um, this is a really great question because, you know, obviously we, we wouldn't know until it happened. What was it that really helped you get in character? Were there any connections that you as a person had to Jesse and Dylan? Did you have any familiarities, anything in common? How did you get, how did you become Jesse and, and Dylan? What helped me get into character? One of the biggest things and I think the most pivotal things to help me get into character was really diving into Jesse's past, what it was like in Ordinary, what it was like with Dylan, what it was like with our parents around before they all vanished, what it was like um, growing up, what it was like on the streets, what it was like going into, you know, all these homes and going into, to, you know, uh, get help and, and talking to you know, the therapists and, and really, really getting into the things before the game ever started. When you actually show up to set on the day, uh, you have to be open to letting things around you happen and, and letting the choices that other actors make affect your performance. So uh, one of the things that really helps me get into character is after I've done all the work on my own, when I'm actually at set is just calming down and not forcing what I think should happen to happen, uh, actually listening and then responding in kind. Because uh, sometimes you don't, you don't want to be acting on an island. You want to be going back and forth with someone else and having a dialogue. So if I'm too much in my own head, I wouldn't be listening to the other people. So honestly, just being open once, of course, once you've done all the work on your own, when you get there, being open to whatever possibilities could happen. 
and so uh, just being open helps me stay in character. Um, I'm a big fan of taking pictures in control, I have done for the past three years. Does it still feel surreal to see your faces shared across social media three years later? Yes, it does, and it never gets old. Being a part of Control has been an amazing experience. Uh, working at Remedy has been an amazing experience. And just knowing that everyone has been enjoying these games as much as I've enjoyed making them, uh, it's really thrilling. So thank you. Thank you to the whole community of Control. So <laughs> yeah, it's very surreal to answer your question. That is crazy for me. It's wonderful to be able to, to feel that, and not only across social media platforms, but you know, even in t-shirts, I've been walking and seeing, you know, control t-shirts or other things I've worked on and people um, represent it. And it's, it's just, I feel very grateful. I feel very thankful and blessed. And I'm, yeah, I'm just happy and proud of the whole team and very thankful to all of the fans. Thank you very much, everybody, for your questions. Thank you all of the fans of Control out there. We really couldn't do this without you. I had a blast. I loved being able to dive back into this world. I cannot believe it has been three years. It has been so rewarding. Thank you to the entire community on behalf of myself and the entire Control Remedy team. We all thank you. We love you. We could not have done this without you guys. And here is to another three years.